Thank you for joining me today as we talk about prenatal equal protection in Georgia. Our objective today is to equip the grassroots by energizing and educating you to action in Georgia's prenatal equal protection efforts. Our presentation is divided into three parts. Part one, educate. This section will aid in the understanding and foundation of personhood and why the recognition of personhood in each human life from fertilization to natural death is the only true way to protect all lives from lethal threats in our culture. Part two, expand. This segment will inform you as to our state legislative process, as well as introduce you to the legislative efforts that we are asking you to engage in during the time leading up to the 2024 Georgia legislative session beginning in January. Part three, energize. In this segment, we will talk about the ways that you as the grassroots can be effectively energized and mobilized to bring an end to abortion in Georgia. At the end of each slide presentation, you will be given contact information. So please contact Georgia Right to Life with any questions or comments you have about any of the content. So let's get started with part one. This presentation is through Georgia Right to Life in partnership with Georgians Ending Abortion. Georgians Ending Abortion is a coalition of over 20 groups that were formed in order to bring an end to abortion in the state of Georgia. This coalition was formed during the summer of 2022 as a result of the Supreme Court decision in the Dobbs case, which technically overturned Roe v. Wade. So we will begin by talking about what is personhood and understanding what that term means. The general term means the right to have rights. That's a very basic understanding of personhood, the right to have rights. So the question is, should these people have the same rights as you? the elderly, the Down syndrome, or the medically futile, or someone at the first stage of fertilization. For Christians, God has said in his word, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. We are created in the likeness and image of God. The mission of Georgia Right to Life as a Christian nonprofit ministry is to restore respect and effective legal protection to all innocent human life from its earliest biological beginning to natural death, no exceptions and no compromise. So in regards to personhood, what is equal protection? Well, our United States Constitution in the 14th Amendment makes this statement. Nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Nor deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. So what is equal protection? It is the understanding and the recognition that as persons beginning at fertilization and extending through natural death for each person who is created in the image of God, as that recognition extends to the equal protection under the law of those who are preborn as well as those who are born. Full protection of the law means love your neighbor as yourself. This is found in Deuteronomy 27, 19, Isaiah 1, verses 16 through 17, and James 2, 8 through 9, showing no partiality in protecting persons. In this video, Bradley Pierce is a Texas attorney 
who drafted bills in over 30 states, including Georgia. Some of those bills, such as the Georgia House Bill 496, are created to end abortion. He was admitted to practice before the U.S. Supreme Court and wrote and filed a brief in the 2022 Dobbs case, which effectively overturned Roe v. Wade. Let's listen to what Bradley has to say about impartiality as it pertains to protection of human life. God says, Isaiah 1, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless. This is about justice. God loves justice. We've already talked about that. But this is also about love. You shall love your neighbor. How? As yourself. That was in Leviticus. Jesus repeats it. James repeats it. That is the royal law, second greatest commandment. And when James talks about it in chapter 2, verse 8, listen to this. He really ties all this together. He says, If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. I mean, there it is. Right there. Jesus says, second greatest commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. James says, if you're showing partiality, you're not loving your neighbor as yourself. You may say you are, but you are not. You are not following the golden rule. Whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this, this is the law and the prophets, right? Jesus says that about love your neighbor as yourself. He also says that about the golden rule. This sums it up. Here it is. Do unto others. Well, what are the laws that protect your life? Those would be the same laws. If we're doing unto others, then we're protect- we want all people to be protected by the same laws. If we're really doing unto others, if we're really loving others as ourselves. That's what love is. And that's not just love for the baby. That's also love for the mothers. There's so many mothers that I've talked to. I know many of you have talked to as well. And they, they, they've, you know, gotten abortion. They've been part of, you know, causing the death of their own child willfully. And they say, I wish it had been illegal. I wish it had been a crime for me to do it. Because then I never would have done it. Yeah. I never would have done it. Well, in our country, we've already talked about the highest governing authority in our country is U.S. Constitution. And then our state constitution is under that. The U.S. Constitution says no state shall deny to any person within this jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. So obeying that is not just about fulfilling our oaths, which I've also sworn an oath as an attorney to the Constitution. It's not just about fulfilling our oath that we've sworn, so help me God, but it's also about obeying Romans 13 and being obedient to the governing authority. And in our country, we don't have a Caesar or a dictator. We have the U.S. Constitution. That's the highest governing authority. And so we need to obey what it says, and that is do not deny to any person the equal protection of the laws. And the Supreme Court actually says the same thing. Back in, actually in 1973, in the Roe v. Wade decision, uh, because they were considering in that case primarily a Texas law uh, that prohibited abortion, most abortions. And, or maybe not even most, but yeah, they'll say most. Uh, prohibited most abortions, um, but... The Texas law at the time, kind of similarly to the North Carolina, North Carolina law now, it didn't make abortion homicide, but it said it was illegal. But it said, it didn't say in the, bit, in the law, but courts interpreted it to say that it does not apply to the mother. And the penalty, it wasn't you know, life in prison or capital punishment like for murdering a born person, the available penalties, but the penalties were two to five years for the abortion doctor you know, who performed it at the time. And so, and yet, even though that was the law in the books in Texas, our assistant attorney general was at the U.S. Supreme Court arguing, hey, Supreme Court, a fetus is a person, they should get equal protection. And the court said in oral arguments and in the actual decision, basically, I'm paraphrasing, basically said, not so fast. Actions speak louder than words. And here's what they literally said, not paraphrasing. Quote, 
this is in the Roe versus Wade decision, you can read it, the majority opinion, not a concurrence or a dissent, in the majority opinion said, quote, there are inconsistencies between 14th Amendment status as a person and the typical abortion statute. If the fetus is a person, why is the woman not a principal or an accomplice? If the fetus is a person, may the penalties be different? End quote. That's what the U.S. Supreme Court said. They, they get it, right? Oh, if a fetus is a person, you would protect them with the same laws to protect all other persons. But you're not doing that, so you're not really tr- you don't really think they're a person. Actions speak louder than words. And if you're not going to treat them like a person, neither are we, and that's how we get Roe versus Wade. That's how we had Roe versus Wade. Because we were not being consistent. Well, we've got to be consistent. And God's word's clear. Do not be partial in judgment. In legal or constitutional terms, we would say do not deny to any person the equal protection of the laws. And that concludes part one of our series. And again, if you would like more information or you have questions regarding anything that was presented in this section, please contact us at the information on the screen for Georgia Right to Life, or you can also talk with your local GRTL chapter leader.